أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين اللهم علمنا ما ينفعنا وانفعنا بما علمتنا وزدنا علما نافعا اللهم أرنا الحق حقا وارزقنا اتباعه وأرنا الباطل باطلا وارزقنا اجتنابه ربي اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل الأقدة من لساني يفقه قولي السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Welcome to the Reflections on the Risale-i Nur by Bede Uzzaman Said Nursi podcast series This is Mustafa Tuna you can listen to the episodes of this series wherever you listen to your podcasts or at the website www.reflections-rn.org. A rough translation of the text we will be reflecting upon today, inshallah, will be posted at this website. And you can go to podcasts, then words, then the 13th word, and scroll down to the relevant section. Inshallah. So, as that also implies, we are continuing with the continuing with the thirteenth word. It had two sections. The first section or the first station, uh, Ustad Nursi offered four comparisons between the wisdoms of the Quran and wisdoms of philosophies, thought systems that are not guided by revelation, and showed us the superiority. Uh, utility and benefit of the wisdom of the Quran living in a way that is guided and taught by the Quran how much superior how much better that is that was the uh, the the subject of the first section of this word the second section or station um, are lessons that Ustad Nursi had given later in time and that he thought should be collated at the end of the third, uh, 13th word because of their relevance. The first two lessons were about um, how to turn one's youth into benefit for the, one's, one's, this world and the hereafter. Right. This is a, in a sense, this section of the treatise is the pastoral aspect of Ustad Nursi's teachings. He gives us, you know, uh, lessons about guidance about real life situations, young men who are um, being schooled in a secular and militantly secularist system where they are being taught not to believe in God or not to respect the rulings of their Lord, etc., etc., they come to Ustad Nursi and say, we don't feel safe about this. We, we, we feel that something is missing in our lives. We don't feel confident about our future. We want to go to paradise. We want to be among those who succeed. Give us some guidance. And Ustad Nursi does that. Now, this uh, third lesson is about prison inmates, about <coughs> prisoners. And as we know uh, from earlier episodes, Ustad Nursi spent quite a bit of his life, especially his life after uh, his exile to Western Anatolia in 19. 25, 26, in prison. Uh, I might be wrong, but that should be something like upwards of nine years. And no, none of this was because he was sentenced to uh, prison, but rather uh, there were trials after trials that he was uh, being sent to. And during the time of the trial, he was under arrest, in imprisoned. And there he saw the... Um, situation of the inmates and as he did throughout his entire life he taught 
he taught them uh, the the truth of the Risale Inur, which was very effective. And many of those murderers, robbers, bandits, etc., thugs, uh, you know, turned into believing upright men uh, who could not even who could not even hurt uh, a um, bed bug that they found in their beds. Mashallah. So this is one of those lessons that he gave to them, a, a more straightforward lesson about uh, what to do with one's life while a prisoner, while an inmate. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Bismihi Subhanahu. In the name of God, glory be unto Him. Or rather, in His name, glory be unto Him. Risale-i Nur'daki hakiki teselliye mahpuslar çok muhtaçtırlar. Prison inmates are very much in need of the true consolation that is in the Risale-i Nur. So there is a true consolation that is in the Risale-i Nur. What is it? What is it? We, we, if we thought we can probably uh, figure a few of these out ourselves having been exposed to the Risale-i Nur uh, so far. Uh, the you know after all the Prophet wasallam told us right amazing are the affairs of the believer when he is struck by a calamity he is patient and acquires good rewards from that and that's good for him and when he is blessed with blessings he offers gratitude and acquires rewards and that's good for him um, or as the Prophet وسلم, said but this is the main meaning and we, we had many lessons from the Risale Inur that expands on this very notion so prison inmates are very much in need of the true consolation that is in the Risale Inur everybody is but having seen the, the inmates there in the prisons Ustad Nursi says well it, these ones really do these ones really do. Hususan, gençlik darbesini yiyen ve taze ve şirin ömrünü hapiste geçirenlerin nurlara ekmek kadar ihtiyacı var. Particularly those who have suffered from the blows of youth and are spending their youthful and lovely lives, lovely lives in prison need the lights, that is the lessons of the Risale Inur, as much as they need bread. Now, Keep in mind that we are talking about a society where bread is the primary staple, the the, the staple food. Uh, it's it, you know they don't have those like food pyramids etc. These are like poor poverty stricken uh, people who uh, you know if if they find bread they are happy that they they have food, and if they eat meat that's perhaps once in a year, once every few months when there's a celebration and somebody slaughters an animal, uh, if they have something to eat with the bread, that's wonderful, right? But bread is always the staple food in their lives. So bread is the essential thing. It's indispensable. If there is no bread, there is no life. Particularly those who have suffered from the blows of youth and are spending their youthful and lovely lives in prison, need the lights, that is the lessons of the Risale Inur, as much as they need bread. Evet, gençlik damarı akıldan ziyade hissiyatı dinler. Now, why? Ustad Nursi is going to explain and uh, show us how to, in a sense, how to uh, study, how to benefit from the Risale Inur. For a, for a you know, prison inmate, I mean, it, it applies to everybody. These these benefits are uh, not restricted to prison inmates because even those who are free and moving around, uh, you know, freely have aspects of the troubles that the prison inmates are having to low to you know smaller degrees, uh, in perhaps you know different in uh, quality in certain respects, but it is of benefit to everybody, especially those who are. Uh, whose freedom is restricted. So why? 
why do they need the lights as much as they need bread? Evet, gençlik damarı akıldan ziyade hissiyatı dinler. His ve heves ise kördürler, akıbeti düşünmezler. Bir dirhem hazır lezzeti ileride bir batman lezzete tercih ederler. Bir dakika intikam lezzeti ile katleder, 80 bin saat hapis elemlerini çeker ve bir saat sefahet keyfiyle bir namus meselesinde binler gün hem hapsin hem düşmanın endişesinden sıkıntılar içinde ömrünün saadeti mahvolur. Bunlara kıyasen bir çare gençlerin çok vartaları var ki en tatlı hayatını en acı ve acınacak bir hayata çeviriyorlar. Ve bilhassa şimalde koca bir devlet gençlik hevesatını elde ederek bu asrı fırtınalarıyla sarsıyor. Çünkü akıbeti görmeyen kör hissiyatla hareket eden gençlere ehli namusun güzel kızlarını ve karılarını ibahe eder. Belki hamamlarında erkek kadın beraber çıplak olarak girmelerine izin vermeleri cihetinde bu fuhşiyatı teşvik eder. Hem serseri ve fakir olanlara zenginlerin mallarını helal eder ki bütün beşer bu musibete karşı titriyor. So, um, in his usual systematic way, Ustad Nursi is going to explain uh, how to benefit from the Risale Nur and the truth of the Quran for, uh, you know, while uh, restricted in, in freedom uh, by dividing the potential addressees into different sections. The first one he's addressing are the youth, young people. Yes, the temperament of youth gives heed to emotions more than the intellect. Gives heed to the, the if you will, the, the hormones, right? The desires, not the intellect. We might have talked about this before. The very definition of the intellect is that which restrains aql in, in Arabic, right? It, if you imagine a an animal, uh you restrain the animal with a perhaps like piece of rope tied to the animal's neck and then tie the other end to a stake so that the animal is, is restrained and cannot go everywhere because going everywhere may mean going into harm so the intellect is there to stra- uh, to restrain the uh, worldly desires vain desires uh, the the emotions, the hormones, the the uh, compulsive soul, and whisperings of the Satan, and the attractions of the world, and so on and so forth, so that the person does not uh, stray into that which is harmful. However, <clears throat> the temperament of the youth, the, the youthful temperament, is very forceful at that at that stage of one's life. The compulsive soul, the emotions, the hormones are very powerful. And therefore, it is much more difficult for this uh, young person to listen to the intellect, to, to use the intellect in the way it is meant to be and overcome those emotions, those uh, desires, those attractions, temptations through the restrainment of the intellect. It is difficult. Emotions and desires are blind. The intellect sees and evaluates the situation and, and, and judges and says, okay, this is good, this is bad. But the emotions and desires are blind. By themselves, they are not restrained by principles, norms, uh, judgments, evaluations, decisions of in a cost benefit analysis they are just blind they, they they just want it they just go in that direction until they hit something and they're stopped physically um, at some point i used to um i used to watch ants a lot they they follow the pheromones that are left by the previous ants or a smell and they move in that direction but they don't have eyesight the way that we have eyesight so they keep moving and moving and moving and if there's something on their path they hit it 
And with their antennas, they, they recognize that they touch something and then they change course. But otherwise, they just keep going in that direction. Sometimes they, if, especially if they are, they, they um, create the pathway and uh, carrying things back and forth. Some are going in one direction, the others are going in the other direction. Most of the time, they are going to touch one another with the antennas. They, are, they will hit one another with the antennas and then move on. So that's how the desires, the emotions are like. They're blind. They are not, they do not, uh, you know, see what is ahead and take, uh, change the course accordingly. They have to hit there. But the problem is, unlike the ants that are uh, blessed with antennas and that, you know, touch things without harm, you know, even though they are moving in that direction headlong, right? Uh, unlike the ants, emotion, the person who is being driven by the emotions and desires does not have a mechanism to you know, stop before actually hitting the head. Perhaps it is like uh, you know, these unfortunate birds that hit glass, uh, glass panes and they die. They don't know that there is something there. There is something there. Right? But you need the intellect to see what is there. The emotions and desires themselves by themselves are blind they do not think about the eventual outcome i want it i want it i want it now well you know look if you if you have it now if you continue on this path you will hit your head and break it but the emotions and desires are they're blind they're deaf they don't see it they don't care about it they do not have the, let's say this way, let's put this way. They do not have the ability to process that information. That information has to be processed by something else, by the intellect, perhaps with the involvement of the heart to show direction. And at the end of the day, by the spirit that is a you know secret that combines all of these. But the intellect is the key. It is the one that is there to judge. Emotions and desires are blind. They do not think about the eventual outcome. They prefer an ounce of ready pleasure over pounds of future pleasure. You say, you say look, don't eat that. Uh, imagine a... Okay, yeah, this is perhaps also going to work. Imagine a chicken... The chicken is hungry, and you put a bowl of uh, you know grains in front of the chicken, and then you tell the chicken, "Look, I know that you're hungry, and I know that you have a bowl of grains in front of you, but there's a long winter to come. If you don't eat that bowl of grains, if you can, you know, be patient now, and perhaps you know take a few pecks, but." Eat only a quarter of it. A quarter of it uh, is, is permissible to you today, but not all of it. Don't eat all of it. If you don't eat all of it, I'm going to provide you with grain, a bowl of grain every day throughout the entire winter. But if you exceed the amount, if you eat more than a quarter of the grain that's in the bowl, now, that's it. You will not get anything throughout the entire winter, you'll prob you will die of hunger and cold and suffering, etc. So if you told this to the chicken, what would the chicken do? Does it go to the bowl, start pecking and stop after one quarter of the grain is finished? No. The chicken does not understand. The chicken does not have intellect. The chicken prefers an ounce of ready pleasure over pounds of future pleasure that is what the emotions and desires especially the emotions and desires of youth are like they can't see future and sometimes even if you uh, you know tell this young man or woman about what is to come the intellect is not sufficiently activated to process that information and turn into action so this is not only about understanding or not understanding Perhaps they understand what you are saying. But the ability to process that information, that understanding, and turn it into action is a different thing. 
they prefer an ounce of ready pleasure over pounds of future pleasure. Now, this is in a prison, right? You start notice he's surrounded by murderers, thugs, thieves. They murder for a minute of the pleasure of revenge. And this is was uh, to some extent still is, but not as much. This was a you know very uh, serious problem uh, in Turkey and many, in many other countries. You know things like blood vendetta or uh, honor killings, right? The killings motivated by this desire for revenge. They prefer an ounce of ready pleasure over pounds of future, future pleasure. They murder for a minute of the pleasure of revenge. So what do you get when you kill the person out of revenge? What do you get? Say that person killed one of your relatives and now you are killing that person. And we are, of course, we are not talking about uh, the, the state doing this. Thing. So we are not talking about justice. We are talking about revenge. You killed that person. What did you achieve? That person is dead, but did this bring the person that you loved back? Uh, did this earn you anything in the long run? Even if you are not caught, you are now facing eternal punishment because if this is a believer, you killed a believer. Yes, perhaps the, you know, the believer was a criminal and guilty, etc., etc., but you are not the judge. It's not your place to uh, to deliver justice, administer justice. Right? Perhaps you save that person from eternal perdition because you unjustly punished that person here and, and reduced uh, the amount of uh, punishment that person is going to get in the hereafter. Perhaps you did something good to that person. But, again, the desires, especially the desires and emotions of youth are blind. They murder for a minute of the pleasure of revenge, then suffer 80,000 hours of the pains of imprisonment. 80,000 hours, that's a very long time if you calculate it's about you know, close to 10 years but it, it might be even more than that and this is just to mean that a very long time they suffer 80,000 hours of the pains of imprisonment because of enjoying an hour of dissipation let's say in a in an uh, affair of adultery or something like that because of enjoying an hour of dissipation in a matter of honor, which would then bring into the question uh, this, uh, this uh, you know, honor killings and so on and so forth, the enmity that that it creates in society because of this, this concern of or about honor, because of enjoying an hour of dissipation in a matter of honor, their life's felicity is ruined. So they, they used to have a felicitous life. They, they used to, you know, did not have major problems in their lives, but that is now ruined. Due to the, so what ruins that felicity? Due to the distress of both imprisonment for th thousands of days, that's, that's one aspect, right, imprisonment, and of worrying about one's enemies. Because now that side is revengeful and they are going to be, you know, seeking you. I mean, you can't even uh, find instances where the person who wants to take revenge commits a small crime so that the person can enter the prison and find the enemy in the prison and kill them. Similar to these, the helpless youths run into such scrapes. So Stadnus must have observed the people around himself, and these are probably based on true stories. So each each time he has you know somebody in mind. Of course, he's not naming names. But those people are hearing this and they are finding themselves in what Ustad Nursi is teaching. And this was a powerful tool uh, for him to uh, nurture them into uh, you know, upright individuals. Similar to these, the helpless youths run into such scrapes that they turn their sweetest lives into most bitter and pitiable lives especially a huge state in the north is shaking this age with its storms by capitulating on the on the desires of youth and here Stadnosi has 
in mind the Soviet Union, the atheistic, uh, you know, Soviet Union. Uh, it, what he says here needs to be taken with a pinch of salt. Uh, this was the image that was projected outside of the Soviet Union at the time, 1930s, 1940s. Uh, this was the image that Muslims uh, in Turkey had about the Soviet Union. But, but it needs to be taken with a pinch of salt, right? But it needs to be taken because there is truth to it too. The, uh, the Bolshevik takeover followed by the civil war and the eventual triumph of the Communist Party and the uh, creation of a Soviet uh, civilization. This all entailed such wild uh, imaginations, wild uh, experiments with all sorts of things, including morality, marriage, family, uh, gender relations, right? Many thought at the time that family was to be abolished. It was a, a byproduct of capitalist life and therefore it was not of any good for the uh, socialist uh, state and therefore it needs to be ab abolished and you know marital relations needed to take place in other uh, context. Uh, you know, supposedly based on consent, right? But that also got out of uh, control, and uh, there were many occasions in which people started to think of you know this kind of relationship as the right of other people. Uh, let's say in a factory, males, females, the men would start to think of this as the right over the women. Uh, so so the, the the entire system of morality that held the, the society intact. And this could be a Christian society or a Muslim society or you know, any other kind of society. There were many different religious groups in the Soviet Union, but especially Christians and Muslims, Orthodox Christians and uh, Muslims, that the entire moral edifice that held the society intact just collapsed. Right? So it needs to be taken with a pinch of salt. This is based on what people were hearing at the time about the Soviet Union, but it also has a foundation to it. It has a reality uh, to, to, to it. That collapse of uh, morality was related to uh, the, the professed, uh, officially promoted atheism of the Soviet regime because in the absence of a higher reality that is in charge and that is going to take people into account it is all it is almost impossible to talk about morality and instill this into people's minds and hearts now kant uh, who started his philosophy assuming that all we have is what we see uh, and perceive and there, they, you know, there is no, there, there should be no resort to a higher reality in the way that Descartes had had done uh, in order to understand reality. After he went through his intellectual, uh, you know, ex experiments and investigation, etc., etc., came to the conclusion that in order for the society to live uh, in a decent way. There has to be morality, and for morality to exist, there has to be belief in God. And therefore, he chose to believe in God in an instrumental way, saying, you know, I, we need God. Not that God exists, but we need God. Therefore, we need to build a, a belief in God, or the existence of God, into our philosophy, into our thinking. Right, this is Kant, uh, who who you know says this. But later generations of European philosophers uh, decided that this this was not necessary. They, especially if you if you are going to think about the the Marxists and socialists who took over in the Soviet Union, their entire morality they thought was supposed to be based on uh, class relations and the elimination of exploitation of. Uh, lower classes, which is a you know noble thing too, but the means that they took for this is unacceptable, um, and and and had drastic consequences too, right? Um, 
so they were officially professing atheism and tried to eliminate God from people's uh, thinking and with the elimination of God you had no basis to fall back on in, in matters relating to uh, human relations. Later on they stepped back and you know changed the course and tried to d create what they thought was a Soviet morality and it was imitating the earlier patterns of uh, you know, moral thinking and human relations uh, with now a a you know duplicitous hypocritical uh, stance on uh, God and atheism. At any rate, here Stadnosi is going to refer to the Soviet Union, and again, there's a foundation to what he says, but it needs to be understood in context, in in proper context. Especially a huge state in the north is shaking this age with its storms by capitulating on the desires of youth because it makes the beautiful girls and women of the people of honor permissible to the youths driven by driven by blind desire that does not see the eventual outcome in fact considering that at their at uh, at their bath houses they allow men and women enter together and naked it encourages such loveness loveness furthermore it makes the property of those who are rich lawful for the vagabonds and the poor that the entire poor it does this that the entire humanity is trembling in the face of such a calamity right so morality has collapsed and also uh, the, the notion of property has collapsed and if we think of it it these both of these are among the uh, primary uh, objectives that Islam upholds right objectives uh, like protecting religion protecting life or preserving religion preserving light preserving intellect preserving honor preserving property these are among the you know primary objectives of uh, Islam Islam as a legal uh, legal system so the, the legal system of Islam rather we should say right and for good reason societies survive and thrive when all of these things are preserved and protected when they are when their sanctity is respected but now imagine a society where no sanctity is recognized and these uh, aspects of sanctity that have held societies together for millennia are being you know, trampled over. Well, that, that is something that those who have intellect and can see the ultimate outcome, right, should be concerned about. And Ustad Nursi is saying that because of the situation, the, the entire humanity is trembling in the face of such a calamity. Um, so what does this have to do with the youth in prison? Well, it is an example that Stadnosi is giving, right? It is an example that this kind of stuff is happening there and look where it leads to eventually. Plus, there was a, a, an enormous propaganda going on from the Soviet Union in Turkey and in other countries where, uh, you know, turning away from religion, appealing to especially young people's desires and emotions and telling them, look, religion is constricting you. If you did not believe, you could do this, you could live a you know, free life, you could, uh, you could uh, you know, uh, if you want, drink alcohol and, you know, get a bit tipsy and enjoy yourself. You could have uh, relationships that are not bound by the sanctity and, and rulings and safeguards of wedlock. Uh, you could eat whatever you want to eat. You could even steal, right? And you can put that in a, a philosophical uh, f f philosophical window frame, philosophical frame in which you could say, I am poor, they are rich, this is a class 
uh, you know, distinction. They are rich because of their class. I am poor because of my class. And the lower classes should uprise and, and take over their property. You could steal. You could steal, but give a give it an angle that legitimizes it uh, within the framework of the ideology that you are espousing, right? But at the root of all of this, the, the appeal, at least for, for some youth at the time, was the promise of uh, the absence of constrictions and restrictions in life. So it can either be you know, blind emotions, blind desires, or the instrumentalization of these blind emotions and blind desires uh, by uh, certain ideologies and the proponents of certain ideologies toward certain political, perhaps economic ends. Right? At that time, it was socialism uh, that was promoting this kind of stuff among the youth of non-socialist countries. Well, now it is consumerism. You know, socialism is not a very powerful entity, ideology. Uh, pres it doesn't have a very powerful presence in the world any longer, but consumerism does. A, a version of capitalism that we are living in or living through, right? It does this. Give into your temptation. Buy this. Give into your temptation. You know, give us money for that. Give into your temptation. Subscribe to this. Subscribe to that. Consume this. Consume that. Right? These are all addressing and targeting the blind desires and emotions. The problem is they do not lead to a good place unless restrained by the intellect. And in many cases, when that, that moves in an extreme direction, it lands the young man or woman in prison because of... Uh, the conflicts that this person runs in their, these people run in their lives with the law. Law is there in order to protect everybody. And it may be just, may not be just, but regardless of whether it is just or not, the ability to see the consequence is taken away if a person relies on the blind emotions and desires alone and does not activate the intellect. So that's a problem, and it's an unfortunate problem, but it happens, and the, the, the youth are likely to fall into this more than the elderly. Uh, they, their prefrontal cortex, the, the part of the brain that helps one think through things in an intellectual way, in a rational way, right? that is not fully, fully developed. And their desires and emotions and hormones are so powerful. Right? So there is a higher likelihood of uh, the youth falling into prison. So what happens? If they did fall into prison, what happens? What is the solution? Where is the, where is the way out? Where is the light? How do, we, how do we see that light and move toward it? So this is going to follow from here. İşte bu asırda İslam ve Türk gençleri kahramane davranıp İki cihette hücum eden bu tehlikeye karşı Risale-i Nur'un meyve ve gençlik rehberi gibi keskin kılıçlarıyla mukabele etmeleri lazımdır ve elzemdir. Yoksa o biçare genç hem dünya istikbalini ve mesut hayatını hem ahiretteki saadetini ve hayatı bakiyesini azaplara, elemlere çevirip mahveder ve su-i istimal ve sefahetle hastahanelere ve hissiyatların taşkınlıklarıyla hapishanelere düşer. İhtiyarlığında eyvahlar, eseflerle çok ağlayacak. Eğer terbiye-i Kur'aniye ve nurun hakikatleriyle kendini muhafaza etse, tam bir kahraman genç ve mükemmel bir insan ve mesud bir Müslüman ve sair zihayatlara, hayvanlara bir nevi sultan olur. So, it is necessary because of what we have described. It is necessary and indispensable that the Muslim and Turkish youths of this time should act heroically and respond to this danger that, that attacks from two sides with the sharp swords of the risale i Nur, such as the fruit, which is the 11th ray, and the guidance for the youth. Of course, we have to keep in mind here that Ustad Nursi is addressing particular young men in the prison 
and these are Turkish and Muslim. This does not mean that what he's teaching is only for uh, Turkish Muslims. It is for all believers, all Muslims in general. This happens to be in a particular context. Right? There's a pastoral aspect, as we said, to what is being taught. We need to read it. We need to listen to it. We need to try to understand it as if it is being addressed to our own souls. So it is necessary and indispensable that the Muslim and Turkish youth of this time, so the youth of this time, should act heroically and respond to this danger that attacks from two sides with the sharp swords of the risale e nur such as the fruit, which is the 11th ray, and the guidance for the youth. These are two uh, treatises from the risale e nur Now, um, it says of this time, so it, does this mean that this is about the time of Ustad Nursi and does not apply to us? No, we already uh, uh, alluded to, to that. Maybe at that time the primary danger uh, appeared to be socialism, but at our time, I would say, and people may disagree with me, but I would say it is consumerism. Wherever there is temptation toward evil that uses desires and emotions as, which are especially powerful in the uh, in, in, in the youth, a young age of human beings, there this, this lesson applies. And I would say there was no time in, in human history where this, this did not apply. Uh, the, the circumstances in which it applied, the, um, the, the points of attack, uh, the context in which it applied may have changed. But the desires and emotions, these are essential human qualities. And he says from two sides, so the desires and emotions, the hormones, and the desires that are not, that are not really needs, but that are wants, and that are not restrained by the intellect. Right? This is the danger. The young men and women whose desires and emotions are powerful and attracting them, uh, de de derailing them from the straight path, Right? should act heroically. Why heroically? Well, it's, first of all, it's a dangerous world out there. One may not recognize the danger, but it is a tremendously dangerous world out there because if we give in to temptation and fall into misguidance and stray from a straight path, where does that lead to? It leads to the fire. It leads to the fire and, you know, there is no no um, more painful torment that we can imagine. That's what God God used uh, in order to torment the people who deserve that torment and punishment. It is dangerous. It is dangerous, and we need tools to use against them. And we need to be heroic because you know once we see the danger, we may also fall into hopelessness, des despair. That is, that is not uh, the, the lot of a Muslim, the lot of a believer. That is not what a believer does because regardless of how horrible the circumstances are and how great the danger is, God is greater. God is the greatest. God is greater. And as long as we put our hope in God, we can move on. How do we put our hope in God? Well, we need to strengthen our faith. And we need to see reality as reality is. And we need to understand the nature of these dangers. So Ustad Nursi details that in those two treatises that he refers to. And he says, use them. Use them. So we are getting a glimpse of what is in there, in this treatise. It is necessary and indispensable that we, the believers, should act heroically and respond to this danger that attacks from two sides with the sharp swords of the truths of faith. That's what the Risalino teaches. Otherwise, that helpless youth will ruin both his worldly future and happy life and his felicity in the hereafter and everlasting life by turning them into torments and pains. And, and he will 
fall into hospitals because of abuses in dissipation and into prisons because of the excesses of his emotions. And we talked about this in detail in the previous episode, so I will not go into too much detail. If you have not listened to the episode before this, please go ahead and do that. He will, this youth, will cry a lot with woes and regret in his old age. You know that the, the power of those desires and the ability to fulfill those desires, the power of those emotions will, will, will go away. The weakness of elderly age, old age, will descend. And, and this person will start to think about, so what did I acquire? What did I acquire with my life in that young age? It was a capital. I had a capital in my hand. What did I do with that capital? Did I, did I just squander it away? into vain desires and the, the caprices and drives of these emotions and hormones that in the end gave me, yes, temporary pleasures of like one minute pleasure, one hour pleasure, two days pleasure, etc. But there's nothing permanent in my hands. It all, poof, evaporated into the air. Will cry a lot with woes and regret in his old age. If he preserves himself, with the teachings of the Qur'an, with the nurturing teachings of the Qur'an, and the truth of the light that is the Risale Inur, which is an exegesis, an interpretation of the Qur'an at this time, then he becomes a complete heroic youth, perfect human being, felicitous Muslim, and a sort of sultan over other possessors of life and animals. This is the nature of the human being. It can move from the highest of the high to the lowest of the low. Those who have ended up in the prison, right? They're at the lower, lower uh, rank of things. If they are believers, they are still much superior to disbelievers. But given the context in which they are living, they have been, you know, slapped down. But, but there is an opportunity to rise to the highest of the high, even in prison. What is it? Follow the nurturing teachings of the Quran. And the truth of the light, the Risale Inur, which is an interpretation of the Quran in this time. Right? So follow the Quran, and the Risale Inur is a binocular through which you look at the Quran, an instrument that, that enables you to understand, especially those aspects of the teachings of the Quran that relate to the times that we live in. Then you reach the highest of the high. You become a complete heroic youth, perfect human being, insana kamil, right? Perfect human uh, being. Ustad Nursi doesn't use the word insana kamil here, which is a concept mostly associated with uh, Muhyiddin al-Arabi and, uh, you know, has a, a lot of resonance in Tasawwuf, uh, in Sufism. Uh, he, he says, mukammal bir insan, but it's related uh, and, and very close. Mesud bir musliman, a felicitous Muslim. And on top of the this, right? So the the human being can rise above, right? At the, create at the highest of the high, and can sink below to the lowest of the low, where you have, you know, animals, low lowly creatures, right? And then once he or she rises above again, now he is above or she again all those other creatures. He is a commander to them. He is a uh, representative of them before God, presenting their gratitude to God. Right? He, one can present the gratitude of the entire creation to God. You have the ability to do that. No, no other creature, uh, perhaps the jinn, uh, or or uh, those angels who are instructed to do so, have this ability. Right? Uh, the, but lower creatures certainly do not have that ability. You can intend to to uh, offer gratitude, show gratitude to God on behalf of the entire creation in addition to yourself. And that is that will be close to a, a universal gratitude. Right? You can do it. It doesn't matter where you are. You can be in the prison, you can be in the hospital, you can be you know, in, the, in the muck of, of, of life, you can, you can, wherever you can rise. 
This is about the relationship that you build with your Lord and you can build that relationship wherever you are. Evet, bir genç hapiste 24 saat her günkü ömründen tek bir saatini 5 farz namazına sarf etse ve ekser günahlardan hapis mani olduğu gibi o musibete sebep veri, sebebiyet veren hatadan dahi tevbe edip sair zararlı ve elemli günahlardan çekilse hem hayatına, hem istikbaline, hem vatanına, hem milletine, hem akrabasına büyük faydası olacağı gibi o 5-10 senelik fani gençlikle ebedi, parlak, baki bir gençliği kazanacağını başta Kur'an-ı Mucizül Beyan bütün kütüb ve suhuf-ı semaviye kat'i haber verip müjde ediyorlar. Evet, şirin güzel gençlik nimetine istikametle ve taatle şükretse hem ziyadeleşir, hem bakileşir, hem lezzetlenir. Yoksa hem belalı olur, hem gamlı, kabuslu bir birer rüya olur. Okay. Yes. If a youth spends one hour of his 24-hour prison life on his obligatory prayers every day, and in addition to the prison preventing most sins, He repents, turning to God from the mistake that has caused his calamity and abstains from other harmful and painful sins. Then, besides being of great benefit to his life, his own life, his future, his country, his nation, and his relatives, all the heavenly books and scrolls with the Quran of miraculous elucidation coming first among them, Report and give the glad tidings that he, this youth, will earn an eternal, bright and everlasting youth in return for five to ten years of temporal youth. Right now he has, you know, five to ten years, make it twenty, make it twenty-five, whatever, years of temporal youth. And he lost that. He just lost that in the prison. However, however, He can turn this into a benefit. He ha- he still has 24 hours in the prison. If he puts one one hour of that into obligatory prayers, and that is the precondition for everything else to follow. Without obligatory prayers, nothing nothing else uh, will follow here. If he puts one hour of his life into obligatory prayers, and then in addition to the prison preventing most sins. So, he had emotions, desires, hormones, could not overcome his lower compulsive soul uh, to abstain from sins. And he was in a dangerous world out there. And now, isn't this a blessing? He's not surrounded by sins, those sins, any longer. So, the prison is preventing him from most sins, and that's a good thing. In addition to that, if he repents, why? Because he already committed a big sin. He repents, turning to God from the mistake that has caused his calamity and abstains from other harmful and painful sins. So, that, But there still will be some sins that are going to be possible in the prison. Lying, backbiting, uh, you know, putting people down. Uh, Satan follows us everywhere right there will still be some and if he tries to abstain from them too then besides being of great benefit to his life now that life was in ruins but now it is being recovered and saved and turned into benefit his future his country his nation and his relatives because you know now he can pray if he can do nothing for them If he is in such a situation that he cannot even receive visits from his relatives, etc., etc., he is getting closer to God, and he can open his hands up and pray, supplicate, ask good for his self, for his relatives, country, nation, the believers, all human beings, the entire creation. Even the sky is not the limit. You can get past that, and and include the entire creation in your prayers. Now, if he does that, 
Then, all the heavenly books and scrolls with the Quran of miraculous elucidation coming first among them. What happens? They are these books and scrolls are reporting and giving the glad tidings that he will earn an eternal, bright, and everlasting youth in return for five to ten years of temporal youth. So what he had here was short, but but what is there to come if the temporal youth is put in the right place that is eternal, everlasting, and bright, beautiful. Yes, if he shows gratitude in return for the love, uh, lovely and beautiful blessing of the youth by staying on the straight path and through obedience, that blessing will increase and become everlasting and more delightful. And God says, if you show gratitude, I increase it for you. And a blessing. Now, if you can see even the prison as a blessing and show gratitude for this blessing of being protected from the, uh, the, the temptations of youth by staying on the straight path, which, means that, which then means that you are using that youth in the right way, in the way it is supposed to be. And this is a form of gratitude. Using the senses, faculties that are given to us in the way that they are meant to be used, in a way that brings us closer to God, is a form of, in and of itself, is a form of gratitude. You're hungry, you find a plate of food that is halal and tayyib, permissible and good. You sit down and start eating, and it tastes delicious. Your sensation of delight in that food, even before you move on to the conscious stage of recognizing this processing and then offering gratitude to God in your heart and in your tongue, even before that, your sensation of delight is a form of gratitude in and of itself. If what you are eating is permissible and good. If you add to this that you eat with the proper manners that are taught to us by the Prophet ﷺ, it will increase. Your gratitude will increase. So even the animals show gratitude. That, that sensation of delight that they have, that's, that's an act of gratitude. Yes, if he shows gratitude in return for the lovely and beautiful blessing of youth, so how do you show gratitude? By using it, that blessing, in the way that it is intended for. That beautiful blessing of the youth, by staying on the straight path and through obedience, that blessing will increase and become everlasting and more delightful. Yoksa, hem belalı olur, hem gamlı kabuslu birer rüya olur. Hem akrabasına ve vatanına ve milletine muzır bir serseri hükmüne geçirmeye sebebiyet verir. Right? So otherwise, if this is not the way that that youth is used, otherwise, it turns into a troublesome, worrisome, and nightmarish dream. Why? Because this life is like a dream. You have 15 years of youth when you are, you know, your body is complete and your energy is on the highest level and your desires and emotions are powerful and you think you are enjoying life etc etc it's like a dream one day you wake up and you recognize that it's all gone like a dream you wake up and you recognize that you are living in reality now not in that world of dreams however there's a way to convert it into everlasting reality by staying on the straight path and spending it in obedience to God and worshipping and abstaining from sins, especially performing the obligatory prayers, etc., etc. If you did not do that and therefore you did not acquire anything positive for eternity, it becomes this worrisome and nightmarish dream. Moreover, 
it causes him to become in effect a vagabond who harms his relatives, country and nation. Eğer mahpus zulmen mahkum olmuş ise farz namazını kılmak şartıyla her bir saati bir gün ibadet hükmünde olduğu gibi o hapis onun hakkında bir çilehaneyi uzlet olup eski zamanda mağaralara girerek ibadet eden münzevi salihlerden sayılabilir. Eğer fakir veya ihtiyar veya hasta ve iman hakikatlerine müştak ise farzını kılmak ve tevbe etmek şartıyla her bir saatleri dahi 20'şer saat ibadet olup hapis ona bir istirahathane, merhamet kerane ona bakan dostlar için bir muhabbethane, bir terbiyehane, bir dershane hükmüne geçer. O hapiste durmakla haricindeki müşevveş her tarafta günahların hücumlarına maruz olan serbestiyetten daha ziyade hoşlanabilir ve hapisten tam terbiye alır. Çıktığı zaman bir katil ve bir müntakim olarak değil, belki tevvekar, tecrübeli ve terbiyeli, millete menfaatli bir adam olarak çıkar. Hatta denizli hapsindeki zatların az bir zamanda nurlardan fevkalade hüsnü ahlak dersini alanlarını gören bazı alakadar zatlar demişler ki, terbiye için 15 sene hapse atmaktansa 15 hafta Risale-i Nur dersini alsalar daha ziyade onları ıslah eder. Now, up to this point we, we assume that this young man and we assume the young man and we assume that this young man actually committed a crime and therefore he is in uh, prison but that may not always be the case it may be somebody who actually did not commit a crime but falsely by mistake uh, put in prison and therefore being oppressed if this prison mate is unjustly sentenced on condition that he prays his obligatory prayers each one of his hours in prison in effect become like a day of worship and he can be counted among the secluded righteous of the past times who would enter caves to worship as that prison becomes like a recluse's cell for him he didn't commit a crime but people were not just people could not be just people could not figure out reality as reality is he was sent into prison on the face of it this may look unfair and from the point of view of human justice it is unfair but fate the determination of god divine determination does not do unjust does not do injustice it is always just how how so in this case well there's a benefit that god has intended for this person in the prison and if he knows how to take advantage of that benefit it's going to be of tremendous good for him how once again First thing, on condition that he prays his obligatory prayers. Without obligatory prayers, nothing will follow. Because that is that is obligatory. That's what God commanded you to do. You cannot disregard what your Lord commands you to do and then assume that you are in, you know, you are a good, uh, good slave of God. You have a good relationship with your Lord. This is the beginning point. This is what opens the gates. If that happens, if he, uh, he if he did not commit a crime, he is innocent and he is praying his five daily prayers. Each one of his hours, in effect, become like a day of worship. He is being patient. Patience is worship. And he is being patient in every moment of his existence there. And he can be counted among the secluded righteous of the past times who would enter caves to worship. There were people, and perhaps there still are people, who withdraw from society. Ustad Nursi wanted to do that for a while in his life. Who withdraw from society in order to seclude themselves from the, the, the temptations of you know, human social life so that they can focus on their worship. Now prison is like that. That prison becomes like a recluse's cell for this person. 
Now, what if this person is not young? You know, it's not only the young who enter prison, right? Eğer fakir veya ihtiyar veya hasta ve iman hakikatlerine müştak ise, farzını kılmak ve tevbe etmek şartıyla her bir saatleri dahi 20'şer saat ibadet olup, hapis ona bir istirahathane ve merhametkarane ona bakan dostlar için bir muhabbethane, bir terbiyehane, bir dershane hükmüne geçer. O hapiste durmakla haricindeki müşevveş, her tarafta günahların hücumlarına maruz olan serbestiyetten daha ziyade hoşlanabilir ve hapisten tam terbiye alır, Çıktığı zaman bir katil ve bir müntakim olarak değil, belki tevbekar, tecrübeli ve terbiyeli, millete menfaatli bir adam çıkar. So, what if that's the case? If he is poor or elderly or sick. Now, we associated youth with you know, strength and vitality and so on and so forth. Right? A person may be old, a person may be sick, a person may be poor, and all of are all of these are qualities that would uh, reduce, if not totally uh, eradicate, that energy and vitality and and strength. Right? If he is poor, or elderly, or sick, and yearning for the truths of faith. When we did the treatise on the sick, we. Um, talked about this a, a, a bit people when they are you know full of energy and vitality etc are less likely to stop and recognize and understand what's going on and seek truth but when they face calamity difficulty then that's a that is a trigger uh, that drives human beings to seeking truth and therefore, if they are poor or elderly or sick, they are more likely to be yearning for the truth of faith, for the, the en- energized and energetic youth. You need to either gently uh, coax them or somehow persuade them, and if if, if need be, sometimes you know slightly uh, coerce them to listening to these truths. But if it is poor, elderly, sick, then they'll be yearning for the truth of faith and they'll be listening with all their senses open, inshallah. On condition of praying the obligatory prayers and repenting again. Now, here we are assume, we are not assuming that they did not commit a crime, right? What is the condition then? Praying the obligatory prayers and repenting. So if the person committed a crime, it is praying the obligatory prayers and repenting. If no crime, it is just praying the obligatory prayers and abstaining from sins, etc., of course. On condition of praying the obligatory prayers and repenting, each one of their hours becomes 20 hours of worship and the prison becomes a place of rest. And these numbers usually come from uh, various prophetic traditions. Ustad Nusi is not just talking, you know, randomly making numbers. Of their hours become 20 hours of worship and the prison becomes a place of rest. You are sick, you are elderly, you are poor, you don't have the means. Yeah, rest here in the prison. A place of love among friends who attend to him with compassion. And hopefully, this is, of course, we are hoping here that the other inmates will understand the circumstances of this person and will be assisting him. And Ustad Nursi must have seen such a perhaps a uh, brotherhood, a fraternity in the prison. And that certainly was the case among his own students. They were showing enormous, uh, enormous, extraordinary uh, fraternity toward one another as they were going through these calamities. When Ustad Nursi was being tried, many of his students were also being, being tried and therefore for, uh, they were imprisoned. And a place of training and lessons for him come here rest and learn your lesson and leave it with a, as a new person reformed improved while in that prison he can like it more than the freedom outside where the sins attack him from all sides then he receives a complete training if he does all of this 
Then he receives a complete training from the prison, and when he leaves, he does so not as a murderer or a seeker of revenge, but as a repentant, experienced, and improved man that you can call man. Or for a woman like you, that you can call a real woman, right? A human. Hatta denizli hapsindeki zatların az bir zamanda nurlardan fevkalade hüsnü ahlak dersini alanlarını gören bazı alakadar zatlar demişler ki terbiye için 15 sene hapse atmaktansa 15 hafta Risale-i Nur dersini alsalar daha ziyade onları ıslah eder. So much so that some people who have seen those among the inmates of the denizli prison and this is a Um, prison where Ustad Nursi stayed for a long time under really difficult conditions. Who received the extraordinary lesson of good character from the lights have said. So there were inmates who received their lesson from the lights from the Risale i Nur and they improved. So much so. They improved so much so that others who were you know, observing the situation from outside, uh, perhaps the Uh, you know the, the the guardians of the prison, perhaps the uh, administration of the prison, or perhaps the administrators of the justice system. They have said, receiving the lessons of the Risale Inur for 15 weeks reforms them, the inmates, more than throwing them into prison for 15 years for improvement. If that's the goal of imprisonment, if people are being locked up for improvement, it works better to teach them. The lessons of the Risale Inur, which is derived from the Quran, uh, especially in in with an with an emphasis and focus on those aspects and teachings of the Quran that are most relevant to our times. Right? It improves them better than keeping them there for 15 years. Madem ölüm ölmüyor ve ecel gizlidir, her vakit gelebilir. Ve madem kabir kapanmıyor, kafile kafile arkasından gelenler oraya girip kayboluyorlar. Ve madem bu hayatı dünyeviye gayet süratle gidiyor. Ve madem ölüm, ehli iman hakkında ibadı idamı ebediden terhis tezkeresine çevrildiğini hakikat-ı Kur'aniye ile Risale-i Nur güneş gibi göstermiştir. Ve ehli dalalet ve sefahet hakkında göz ile göründüğü gibi bir idamı ebedidir. Bütün mahbubatından ve mevcudattan bir firak-ı la yezalidir. Elbette ve elbette hiçbir şüphe kalmaz ki, en bahtiyar odur ki, sabır içinde şükredip, hapis müddetinden tam istifade eder, nurlardan dersini alarak istikamet dairesinde imanına ve Kur'an'ına hizmet etmeye çalışır. Since death is not dying, you know, death is always there. It, it, it is not dying and disappearing. Since death is not going away. And the appointed time is hidden. It may come at any time. And since the grave is not closing, all who come in convoys enter there and disappear. Since this worldly life is passing with utmost rapidity, and since the Risale Inur has shown, like the sun, relying on the truths of the Quran that For the people of faith, death is converted into a document for salvation from eternal condemnation to non-existence. And since for the people of misguidance and dissipation, it is that, that death is eternal condemnation to non-existence and a separation from all of their beloveds and all existent beings as seen by the eye. So we don't need a report from whatever is behind death in order to understand this. We see that those who die are being separated. To understand that there is more to it, we need a report. Right? And we can also contemplate it and understand it, that it makes sense, etc. But the report is what what helps us have full confidence in, in, in what is to come in the hereafter, in detail. Right? But for those who are in misguidance and dissipation, living in dissipation, it is eternal, con death is eternal condemnation to non-existence and a separation from all of their beloveds and all existent beings, as seen by the eye, since all of these are the case. Certainly and certainly there will be no doubt left that the most fortunate 
person is the one who shows gratitude in patience and benefits completely from time in prison, receives his lesson from the lights, that is the Risale Inur, and of course this is an, a, a lesson that Ustad Nursi is teaching to the inmates in the prison, and Risale Inur is his teaching, receives his lesson from the lights, and tries to serve his faith and his Quran with, within the confines of the straight path. Again, this is a very profound uh, sentence, a paragraph-long sentence, but we will not go into to much detail because this is the subject of the entire uh, previous episode. So again, if you have not listened to it, please go ahead and listen to it. It is all going to be of great benefit, inshallah. Ey zevk ve lezzete mübtela insan. Ben 70 yaşımdayım. Binler tecrübelerle ve hüccetlerle ve hadiselerle aynen yakın bildim ki hakiki zevk ve elemsiz lezzet ve kedersiz sevinç ve hayattaki saadet yalnız imandadır ve iman hakikatleri dairesinde bulunur. Yoksa dünyevi bir lezzette çok elemler var. Bir üzüm tanesi yedirir, on tokat vurur, hayatın lezzetini kaçırır. O oh man who is afflicted with pleasures and delights. What, what an expression. Right? Pleasures and delights. Who doesn't want that? But he's saying, who is afflicted with pleasures and delights? Why? If those are worldly pleasures and delights and you do not see the reality behind them, you are just being tempted by them and they rule you instead of your intellect ruling yourself, your body and your uh, all of your faculties in order to benefit from this world in a way that earns you the pleasure of God. If that's not happening, these pleasures, these delights, these tastes of the world, they are, they are, they are calamities. They are afflictions. Oh man, who is afflicted with pleasures and delights? I am 70. Now Ustad Nusi is saying this. And imagine a 70-year-old man still in prison, being imprisoned for for expounding the truths of the Quran. Subhanallah. I am 70. I have known with thousands of experiences and evidences at the level of the vision of certainty I have recognized at the level of the vision of certainty that true pleasure, painless delight, grief, grief-free joy and the felicity of life are only in faith. And they are found within the circle of the truths of faith. Otherwise, there are many pains for each worldly delight. It gives you a piece of grape to eat, then delivers ten slaps on the face and drives away all life's pleasures. Yes, there is pleasure in the world and yes, we are here to enjoy them. But there is a way to enjoy it and there is a way not to enjoy it. If it is illicit, if it is not permissible, if it leads to disobedience, rebellion to, to God, it will lead to eternal torment. If it is licit, now if this is the thing, if it is licit, but the person does not have faith and therefore is not able to see it from the true perspective that shows reality as reality is, then there still is pain in it. Why? Because it is temporary, it is transient, it is fleeting, it is moving away and drifting, it is drifting away and leaving you. Time is passing. Either the blessings disappear or you die and you are cut off from those blessings. And being a human being, you have, you have the knowledge of this. You are not an animal who does not and cannot think about what is to come in the future. You are a human being who has full cognizance cognizance of the transience of the blessings that you are enjoying and there is pain in that recognition. But if you have faith and you put your trust in God, you look forward to an eternal enjoyment of the betters of those blessings. You see them as demonstrations of what is to come and you look forward to your death and what is to come after your death with joy and expectation. Great expectations. That is where 
and how a believer lives. Ey hapis musibetine düşen bir çareler. Madem dünyanın zağlıyor ve tatlı hayatınız acılaştı, çalışınız, ahiretiniz dahi ağlamasın ve hayatı bakiyeniz gülsün, tatlılaşsın. Hapisten istifade ediniz. Nasıl bazen ağır şerait altında, düşman karşısında bir saat nöbet, bir sene ibadet hükmüne geçebilir, öyle de sizin ağır şerait altında her bir saat ibadet zahmeti çok saatler olup o zahmetleri, rahmetleri çevirir. All the helpless ones who have fallen into the calamity of imprisonment. Since your world is crying, right? you have a worldly life and it is full of crier. And your sweet life became bitter. Try so that your hereafter does not cry as well. That's what matters after all. That is the life, right? Truly, life, the real life, is the life of the hereafter. Try so that your hereafter does not cry as well. So that your everlasting life laughs instead of crying and becomes sweet. Take advantage of the prison. Amazing are the affairs of the believer. When they are struck by a calamity, they are patient and the, the outcome is good for them. There is an opportunity for advantage in everything. Take advantage of the prison. In the way that sometimes an hour of keeping guard under heavy conditions in the face of the enemy can, can turn into a year of worship in effect, Likewise, your one hour of exertion to worship under heavy conditions, I mean, the, the prison conditions may be tough and difficult to write, maybe cold, it might be you know, hard among so many people, etc. But, but if you exert yourself, if you struggle under those circumstances, proportionate to the, to, to the exertion and struggle, the reward is going to be greater. Likewise, your one hour of exertion to worship under heavy conditions becomes many hours and turns exertions into blessings of mercy. Now, may we all stay away from prisons and hospitals and places of dissipation and so on and so forth. May we not have to listen to this lesson uh, as as its true addressees but but there is a lesson in this for everybody we can all be sick we can all be poor we can all be elderly maybe become elderly right all for all of us we can all find ourselves in situations where we feel restricted and constricted and one example is the the the uh, the lockdowns and quarantines of the pandemic that we are going through. We are all like prisoners, but we can turn this to our advantage if we look at life and reality from the Quran's perspective, which is the subject of the thirteenth word of course, that we are reading and reflecting upon. So, this is um, this is it, and it was a bit long. I apologize. I usually try to keep these to one hour, but uh, I didn't want to stop in the middle of this. This is a you know compact text that has a cohesion. I didn't want to break that. Subhanaka la ilma lana illa ma allamtana innaka anta al-alimul hakim. فأخر الدعوة من الحمد لله رب العالمين الفاتحة